Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on NC Studio, a powerful software for controlling CNC machines. In this video I'll be guiding you step by step on how to set up and operate your machine with NC Studio. Uh, whether you are a beginner or looking to refresh your knowledge, this tutorial will help you get started easily. Let's dive right in. So after we've turned on our machine and launched the software, we're greeted with its main user interface, built and designed to be user-friendly with intuitively organized tools and functions. The software's main interface can be split into five sections or areas, each of them containing the most important and frequently used tools and functions. These areas can be named as the main menu bar, a section containing main functions, buttons to start, stop or pause the production process, as well as, uh, as, well as limit switch status. Uh, we also have a section for setting up the zero coordinates for all axes, zeroing on our workpiece, uh, control of feed rate and spindle speed. We have a jog section which contains the buttons for manual control, movement and precise positioning of all the axes. And we have the section for graphical representation of our design and G-code. So let's start with exploring the main menu bar. In here we have some of the software's main functions such as in the file menu, we have options to open, load, edit, save and close our NC files, as well as a list with uh, recently loaded or edited files. In the edit menu, we have all the basic operations, copying, pasting and cutting files, and in the operation menu, we have multiple options for setting up the workpiece origin. Uh, moving the axis to the origin point, saving and loading previously saved origin coordinates, and the most important function called move to reference point. We use this function to initiate the homing sequence of the machine, which is of extremely high importance, and after each power up of the machine, it is necessary to do this process. After we click on move to reference point, we are greeted with a new window named BKRAREF and in it uh, we need to click on the All Axis button so that the machine can start the homing sequence. But why is this important? Well, after the machine is powered up, it doesn't know in which position its axes are and it doesn't know how much remaining travel it has along them. So what the homing sequence does is uh, after its initiation, the axis will start moving towards their limit switches, which are located at the end of each axis. The very second those limit switches are triggered, the machine stops its movement and gains its true coordinates. In essence, it knows where its axes are relative to the work surface. So, after we are finished with the homing sequence, we can continue with setting up the workpiece on the machine bed. Once it's fixed in place, we need to position the tool in our desired location right on the surface of the workpiece. We can do this by using the control panel in the jog section of the interface. We notice that the panel has dials for each axis in their positive and negative directions. X plus and X minus move the spindle along the gantry or X axis. The uh, Y plus and Y minus move the gantry uh, forward and backward along the machine's bed or its y-axis and the uh, Z plus and Z minus buttons move the spindle up and down uh, they move it up and down its axis or th that's the Z-axis so with the X and Y buttons we position the tool and spindle at the location of our workpiece where we want to set our zero reference point and with the Z buttons, we position the tool right on the surface of the workpiece so that it barely touches it. In the jog section, we have different options for movement offset. So namely, as long as the jog option is clicked, the axis will move continuously as long as we're uh, keeping their buttons pushed. Um, if we want to position the axis, let's say, on the workpiece with uh, greater uh, precision, uh, then, below the jog option, we have various intervals, from 0.01 millimeters to 10 millimeters of movement. And if we choose, for example, let's say, the 1 millimeter option, 
and we press on any of the buttons for axis movement, the machine will move them for a distance of one millimeter. So we use these buttons to position the tool in our desired location and after we've done this it's time to zero the axis. Um, in the NC section or the section that contains the tools for setting up the, the zero coordinates, feed rate and spindle control, we need to, we need to locate uh, these three small panels named W coordinates or work coordinates and click them one by one so that they change their coordinates into 0 0.000. Um, the top panel uh, sets the zero position for the x-axis. The one below it is responsible for the y-axis and the final one is for the z-axis. We need to make sure that all of them have turned into zeros and with this uh, we have successfully zeroed our machine. So next thing we need to do is to upload our NC file which contains all the data and parameters from our design. We can do this by choosing the option Open and Load, which can be found in the file menu from the main menu bar in the top left of the interface. Once we click on it, we are greeted with a new window named op Open and Load, where we need to locate our file. Select it and click on the Open button. After we've uploaded our file, the software will open up the auto window where it will uh, show the entirety of the G-code from our file. Um, NC Studio also offers the option to edit this code. We click on the window named Manual right next to Auto to return to the Jog section. Um, the only remaining thing to do is to press the Start button and the machine starts the spindle and executes the uploaded G-code. If we wish to return the axis to our previously assigned zero position, we can uh, click the button move to, to move to origin, which is located in the section containing the main functions right beneath the main menu bar. In the section below it, the NC state, uh, in the feed rate window, we can speed up or slow down the movement of the axis when the tool has engaged with the workpiece and it's carving along it and in its neighboring window named spindle revs we can control the rpm of the spindle and we can also turn it on or off manually by clicking the designated button so nc studio is truly an amazing easy to use and reliable software i hope that all of you enjoy working with this software as much as i do and i hope that you found this video helpful thank you all for watching and i'll see you again in another video Bye.